Hello again, and today we're going to look at an issue that has only just come up recently. It's actually been a problem that's been there for quite a while for Model 3 owners, but they've only just realised that this is happening because of the blind spot camera feature, where you can notice much more easily that your rear-facing repeater cameras, the ones on either side of the car, uh, produce a lot of glare when the indicators are on at night. So we're going to have a look at this and see if there's anything to be done about it. Now the best way to test to see if your cameras suffer from this glare is put the hazard lights on and go round to each of the cameras, put a bit of black tape over the camera lens. This is going to simulate complete darkness and it's going to mean the camera puts its gain up and it tries to see as much as it can at night and it's going to make the glare even worse and much more easy to spot when you look on your rear view camera. So then go into the display, press the rear view camera mode and then you'll see complete blackness but if your cameras are suffering from this problem you're going to see this great big orange glare mainly at the top but some at the bottom as well. When this issue has been reported to Tesla at the service centre some have been replaced under warranty but we've also seen some reports of Tesla trying to make out that this is just a, a feature of the camera and uh, if you look if you read this particular report you'll see that they're just asking to replace the cameras and that you'll get charged $470 for the privilege. Well, you know, that's not necessarily the best option, so we wanted to take a closer look, try and understand what's going on with the cameras, where this glare is coming from, why it isn't there in later cameras, and also whether or not anything can be done to fix the older ones. So let's have a look at one of the cameras, uh, get it out of the car and see if we can figure out what's going on here. There are two poppers that you take out at the bottom of the wheel trim, and then you can lever the wheel trim out and that gives you access behind the front wing to get to the, the rear of the repeater camera. You're probably going to find when you uh, lever this piece of wheel trim out that there's a lot of accumulated leaves and dirt at the bottom. So this is a good opportunity also to give your car a bit of a spring clean. But once you've just eased that liner out of the way, you should be get an arm in there. Make sure you've got gloves and long sleeves on. You don't, you don't want to get a nasty injury from that wing. And then with a little bit of encouragement, let's put it that way, you should be able to get the repeater camera out and unplug the two plugs on the back. And what we'll do now is we'll take this inside. We've got another couple of cameras that we've managed to procure. So we have a selection here of Model 3 cameras. There's a brand new one we've got here, which was the latest one from a service centre with the latest part number, which ends in 86420C. That's the one that they tell me is the current camera. We have one that's an old one from uh, a broken Tesla that uh, has been broken that means, but um, not uh, a broken camera. It's a working camera. We've, we've taken that one apart already to see what it's like inside and we've got another one here which is also from a car that was stripped for spares so we're going to see what that one's like too. So here is the earliest camera that we've got here today and it's from an early Model 3. It uh, came obviously with the chrome trim. It's got the Tesla logo still on the chrome trim which wasn't appearing on there later. So we knew it was an early one and we knew that it was likely to suffer from the glare problem. So we'll have a look in, inside that a bit later on because we've already taken that one apart. But uh, let's move on to a slightly later one which we also got from a car that had been broken in for spares. Uh, but it has got an earlier part number. So we can see on this one, part number ends in 10758 here. There are a lot of different part numbers that we've seen on items that have been on eBay and in the uh, EPC, the parts catalogue. So we think there's been quite a few revisions of, of the camera, the repeater camera, but it's difficult to know which ones have this glare problem and which ones haven't. And when the problem was fixed so that's going to need a bit more research. We also ordered a brand new camera, new in terms of it's the one that they're supplying at the moment in the UK from the service centre. So this one has a part number ending in 86420C. As far as we know it, there isn't a later camera at least that we've got available over here. So this one is uh, not suffering from the glare problem. We also asked to see what the clip-on chrome trim was like. So we've got a chrome trim. I think it's described as clip-on in the parts catalogue but it is not clip-on. It comes with this 3M tape on the back so you have to peel that off and you have to stick that on. Once it's stuck on that's it, it's permanent, you won't be able to get that off again. So just to let you know that's really the de-chromed camera and if you want the chrome camera to match your earlier car then you'll need to order that piece of trim as well. 
looking at the earliest camera that we've got here and the latest camera that we've got here externally there's very little to choose between them you, you can't really tell anything that's uh, different from the outside other than on the later cameras there is a, a little lip that runs around the edge of the camera but that's got nothing to do with stopping the, the glare problem from happening it just seems to be a design point if you turn the camera over and you look at the back here even though these two cameras obviously are for diff from different sides of the car the design is is all, almost identical also the various mouldings in there like the Tesla logo and the position of the clips, the connectors again they're very similar if not identical between the very earliest and the very latest camera so let's have a look at the camera in a bit more detail up close so at the front of the camera we've got the window here where the light comes through when the repeater's operating and then we've got the, the camera lens here it doesn't look on the face of it as though the camera lens is sealed very well around the housing but We'll see in a minute when we take it apart that actually it's quite well done in there. And to turn the camera over, we've got a few things on the back to point out. The, one of the most obvious things is there's one of these gore patches which is there to evacuate any moisture that might be in the body of the camera. Now th these are completely sealed, these cameras, there, there's no apparent join and there's no way you can actually take the camera apart easily. And this is one of the problems with this particular issue is if we can find a way of stopping the internal glare it's just not easy and it's not practical to take the camera apart and fix it so we'll show you that in a bit more detail later the two connectors are the 12 volt connector there which is for the blinker itself and a coaxial connector here which is for the camera a couple of other things I'd like to point out on the back of the unit here on the housing is the clips that hold the unit into the uh, wing of the car there are two clips at the bottom and uh, two, they're not so much clips as uh, locators at the top. When we take the unit out of the car, we get our hand behind this housing, we need to press down on those two clips there to release the bottom half first and, and then that should release it from the top of the cutout in the, in the wing. So we're going to go back now to our oldest unit that we took apart and that involved using a Dremel to uh, cut through the, the plastic both sides and prise it apart it's even with the Dremel not that easy to do you can see we've broken off some of the plastic here which is quite brittle so it, it would be quite difficult to try and I think saw this uh, in half or even Dremel it in half and make it make a clean job of it so you can stick it back together again but when you do that and you can take the two halves apart then we'll see that the first thing is the camera is actually held quite well in the front part of the housing. So when we turn that over you can see that the camera itself is quite well protected. It's got a foam uh, ceiling strip here and it's got an o-ring and that o-ring locates within this part of the housing and forms a, a watertight seal. So it's actually very well sealed. The rest of it is glued or welded together so there's no water going to get in the joints and also the the clear plastic part where you see the the blinker coming through is also either stuck or molded in there as well so it's to all intents and purposes completely sealed unit quite difficult to get apart what i'll show you now is what the unit looks like inside when the 12 volts applied to the blinker unit so if we connect this up to a power supply we can turn the led on there and um, you can see how this works the the leds underneath this light pipe piece but the acrylic actually channels the light up to this secondary little window and, and, and that's what shines on the window in the other part of the housing so that when this is all together you get a nice light that's coming out of the, the blinker unit that's being fed by that light pipe not just from the LED that's in the corner here. One of the first things I noticed when I looked inside the camera was that we've got a camera here that's connected to the main circuit board with a ribbon cable. That camera is mounted on its own circuit board. It's not protected in its own housing. The, the circuit board is exposed to the LED and the LED itself uh, is not really very well shielded from the rest of the components inside this unit. So we thought we'd take a, a closer look at where the light might be getting into the camera. And to do that, we'll take the circuit board out of the housing so we can see things a bit more clearly. If I take that circuit board now out completely of the housing, we can now see a little bit more detail. So the 
LED is, is here and um, without the light pipe that would just be it going in all directions and you wouldn't get enough light actually going into the window where you want to see the repeater working. One of the first things I noticed when I looked at this camera PCB is that on the back there are three holes that go all the way through and with the LED directly opposite I could see that light could shine through those holes uh, through the circuit board and behind that is the sensor. Now whether the sensor is, is glued you know, to the circuit board or attached in another way light coming through there could quite easily be responsible for some of the glare that we're seeing. So what I did next was make up an extension cable that allowed me to plug this circuit board that I've taken out of the repeater housing into the car and I can sit inside the car and watch live uh, exactly what's going on when I shine a flashlight all around the circuit board and the camera housing and the camera itself. And what I'm looking for is to try and simulate exactly the same effect on screen as I get when the indicators are on. And sure enough, when I hold this flashlight over those three holes, you'll see that I'm getting exactly the same pattern of glare that I do when the indicators are on and the units in the car. So it's pretty conclusive. What I'm going to do now is take uh, two circuit boards out of their housings, one from a camera that's got glare, one from a camera that hasn't got glare, and we can examine them in more detail. OK, we've got the boards and the cameras out of the housing now. Just to be clear, this camera has got no glare when the indicators are on. This camera does have glare when the indicators are on. We're going to play a little game of spot the difference. It's fairly obvious, but let's just go through the fact that if you look really carefully, version 08, exactly the same on this camera. Absolutely everything is the same. The layout, the PCB is the same, the components are the same. The only thing that's different is this number here, which I guess is the serial number. The cameras also appear to be identical in most respects, but there's one significant difference. And we saw earlier where we think most of the glare seems to be coming from when the indicator's on and the LEDs illuminated inside. And that was through these three holes that are in the printed circuit board. They're through holes, so they're what are they doing? They're transferring the copper that's plated on one side of the PCB to connect to the copper on the other side of the PCB and this is where we saw when we tried the test in the car that we could clearly see the glare was coming through those holes so on this camera you've probably spotted it by now I think you can see here how this piece of tape has been applied to the camera and overlapped onto the camera housing and, and that's been done before this stick has been applied so it's it's nothing that's been done other than during production it couldn't have been done afterwards it couldn't be done by me. <laughs> it's uh, purely, you know, a fix that they found that they needed to do to stop this glare coming through. So I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions on that. But I think, you know, this is fairly good evidence to show that uh, the problem had been spotted. It had been fixed. Obviously, later designs, they've eliminated that anyway because the circuit board is different. As we can see here with the top board that's come out of the brand new camera that we got from a service centre recently, it's uh, very much different now. Uh, looks like it's probably from a different manufacturer and as we can see close up there's no through holes on that PCB so no glare can get through. So the obvious way to fix this problem if you're suffering from it is to fit brand new cameras. Uh, whether you do it or Ranger does it, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. Well we would like a challenge so we thought we'd have a go at fixing one of these. I don't know that many people are going to want to try this because there is a risk that you could destroy it but first off we taped over the lens of a camera that we knew was affected and you can see this is our starting point lots of glare on there now there's really only one way to get inside um, of these units other than almost destroying them that we could think of and that's to drill a hole in the right place you've got to know exactly where to drill it and it's very important that you don't go too far in with that drill because if you do you're just going to get into the PCB and the camera and destroy the whole thing. So using a pillar drill and being very careful to set that up so that once we just get through the plastic, it stops going too far in, we, we drill a hole. We'll show you where these holes should be in a graphic towards the end. And the idea of this is really just to open up enough room that we can get some paint or sealant or something in there to paint over the parts of the circuit board that are actually letting the light into the sensor. So once we've done that we'll clean up that hole a little bit and then with the aid of a torch we can see just at the right angle two of those three holes that are in the PCB that we want to plug 
Uh, it's a little bit too fiddly, I think, to get a bit of tape in there, a bit of insulating tape or masking tape. So what I decided to do was use some silicon sealant, black silicon sealant, and I could just about get in there at the right angle with a drop of it. There's nothing else really in there that you could mess up or would matter if it got covered with a bit of sealant because obviously the lens of the camera is outside, the sensor is all sealed. We're just trying to get those holes covered up so it doesn't let the light in. Now once you've done that, it's probably a good idea to test it on the car before you seal the hole up, but once you're happy with it, we're using a bit of two-part black epoxy putty there to seal the hole and uh, just got to make sure that that's still watertight, especially in the position that it's in at the top of the assembly. So with that unit back in the car, this is the result, and it's actually quite a dramatic improvement. But it still isn't perfect, and we wanted to see if we could go just one stage further and get it as good as the way that they've done it in the factory with a bit of tape. So we're going to drill another hole. Now this hole is even more critical, the position of it, and being sure that you don't go too far into the, the unit. Uh, there, there are some components behind there which you could damage and you just wreck the whole thing. Then we're going to put a bit more of that sealant in there. Where we're going to do it is all the way along the top of the PCB here where they, they've put their bit of tape. Just where that sensor housing is glued onto the PCB, that glue is, is translucent and it, the light's coming in through there. So you want to put some sealant all the way along there. Now after that we've put more epoxy putty there to just seal up that other hole and once that's solid we should be able to put the unit back in the car and um, see how we go. And that's the result. I mean there is a tiny little bit of glare there coming through probably from where the glue is around other sides on that sensor housing but I think when we look at that at night normally we're going to find that that's much much better and you can see side by side with the original uh, massive improvement. So quite happy with that, but I'm not really sure many of you are going to want to do what I've just done. But if you're brave and you really want to have a go and uh, you're willing to accept that if it goes wrong, you might have to buy a new camera, then use a drill bit like this. Five or six millimeter diameter is what I'd recommend. You need a flat head on that drill bit and then drill a couple of pilot holes. The positions I'm going to show you here. Um, very careful. Use a drill press or a, uh, some way of controlling exactly how deep you're going to be drilling into that plastic because you just want to drill through the housing and no more. So here's what it looks like after we've drilled it. We've put some masking tape around to stop the housing getting scratched and uh, we've also at this stage put the sealant through. You could use black paint, you could use silicon sealant, anything that's black and opaque. Use a very fine paintbrush or maybe a stick or piece of wire, anything like that and just get it over those holes on the printed circuit board and along the top of the camera housing you'll be good. And finally plug the holes we've used some epoxy putty but you could use again some sort of silicon sealant or even just tape with some glue over the top maybe just to make sure it's completely watertight. And once we've done that we can get the camera back into the car, test it first again before you reinstall. Uh, there's just one more thing to do and that applies whether you put new cameras in or you're repairing your cameras because they've been moved just do a camera calibration and that's it for today so i hope you've enjoyed today's video and i hope you've learned something if you want to learn more please subscribe like and come and visit us again on tesla gurus